Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of The Map Room. I'm your host, Eric Cunningham, and along with me this week, as always, we have Jared Stone and Nick Morris. Um, this week continues our series on Texas. Last week we covered uh, Harris County and the Houston metropolitan area, and this week we're setting sights on the Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area. Uh, it's the second largest in Texas, has one of the largest cities in Texas in, in Dallas, but also has Fort Worth, Arlington. Um, it's just a generally very large, urbanizing and growing area that is really uh, a major player in state politics. Uh, this area of the state is historically a Republican stronghold. It's where Republicans have done great for years. Uh, they built a lot of their urban and suburban strength in the Dallas area. But over the last decade, as political realignment has happened and changes have occurred, like the uh, candidacy of Donald Trump, you've seen Republican fortunes in the Dallas-Fort Worth area decline. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a map of the 2016 results here, just to give you an idea of what we're starting with, what Dallas-Fort Worth looks like at the moment. So uh, this is courtesy of our friend Jim. You can follow him on Twitter at the, uh, the name listed below. Uh, this is the Dallas-Fort Worth area. There's other more expansive versions of the county lineup here, but this is kind of the, the base level of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And you'll notice that uh, Donald Trump won this uh, area by 6.3 percentage points. Uh, he won every county in it except for Dallas, but of course Dallas is the most populated county and is home to the city of Dallas as well as some other areas. Um, you have pockets of Republican strength in the North, but otherwise most of it is pretty solidly Democratic. Um, but in recent years, um, it's gotten even more Democratic than this. I'll go ahead and show you uh, kind of the divide here between um, Dallas and Fort Worth, which is kind of one of the, the fundamental uh, understanding points of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So if you'll notice right here, this is kind of the map that we're using. So Dallas is considered to extend to the red counties around here. That's kind of the, the areas more associated with the city of Dallas and Dallas County. And then the blue ones, the blue counties are the ones more associated with Fort Worth and a Tarrant County, as it is called. Um, so that's kind of the baseline of what we're talking about when we mean the Dallas-Fort Worth area. There are more expansive definitions that include some other areas above that border Oklahoma and some other counties that stretch out. But this one kind of limits those more exurban and rural areas that don't have as much of an economic and political tie to the region. So I'm gonna throw it to Nick, who's gonna explain some of the basic demographics and population growth in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is one of the most rapidly growing areas in the country. So if you look at this metropolitan area, the, uh, the main urban core of this area is really Dallas County. It's like, hence the name, it is where, it is where the city of Dallas is held. Uh, the city of Dallas is one of the biggest in the country. It's, it's um, up there in the top 10. Um, and like most big cities, it is very democratic, very democratic leaning. Um, very minority heavy too, it is about 29.6% white, 39.9% uh, Hispanic and 23.7% black. So, so uh, there's no dominant minority group in, in here, but like overall they, there are there are a lot are a lot of not minorities. If you look at if you look at a map of the area, you'll see that there are areas that are, that have heavy African American populations, um, mainly in the south of the county. Um, in the middle are where are where most of the Hispanics are. Um, and then if you look at over in the north, it's sort of a blend of Hispanics and whites. So um the northern area is, tends to be where tends to be where Republicans have done well, but but in recent years this there has been quite a drastic shift towards Democrats. As you can see from this map in front of us, there is huge demographic diversity. The African Americans mostly exist in the southern part of the county, mostly the southern part of Dallas City, and then if you look at the middle bit, that's where the Hispanics mostly reside. And this minority population is generally what makes the county democratic leaning. Looking at the larger picture of the metropolitan area, you can you can see that there's there's a lot more to it than than just Dallas and the county around it. And I want to look at like three three counties mainly, and those are Tarrant, Collin, and Denton. So now I want to look at Tarrant County, which if you look at the demographic um, numbers for this county, is you can see that it's a lot more white than when than Dallas County, but that doesn't mean that it is a heavily white county by any stretch. It still has a lot of Hispanics and a decent amount of African Americans. And these are mainly contained within the city of Fort Worth itself, mainly the urban parts of this county. 
and those are the more democratic linear areas of the state. And outside there, outside there, you've also got Arlington, which is another um, big city in the area, which also has a large minority population. And looking outside these two cities, however, you can see that, that the area is very heavily white and also very heavily Republican. And this is largely what makes this a Republican county. It's been a Republican county for decades. It's probably one of the biggest in the country to be to be considered safe Republican. Like it's arguably not considered safe Republican anymore. If you look at 2018 results, you can see that, that a lot of statewide Democrats actually want this county. This is something that very little people expected, but mainly driven by by this suburban growth. And you can see that this area has has grown significantly in the last few years. It's grown about on par with the rest of the state of Texas, 16% in the last decade. But that essentially pales in comparison to what, what you see in Colin and Denton. That's you're seeing about population growth, which is about double of that. Um, you don't really see those in many other areas. Only other areas of the state which have these sort, this sort of growth is for, for Ben County in the Houston area, which we covered last week, and Hayes County in the Austin area, which we'll cover in the future. But if you look at Colin and Denton County, you'll see that they're very different from, from these two. They have consistently gone Republican. They have given Republicans large margins, and also because they're heavily white. If you look at this, uh, if you look at these numbers here, you'll see that these are majority white counties, as opposed to Dallas and Tarrant. And these are the, f the four main counties in the metropolitan area. They're, they make up the bulk of the population. There are also other areas to look at within this metropolitan area. These are not only heavily white, but they're also heavily Republican. They're probably some of the most heavily Republican areas, not only relatively to other suburbs or other exurbs, but also relatively to any other areas in the country. Specifically Parker and Wise, these are two these are two areas that I stumbled upon a couple of weeks ago when I was when I was mapping the state. These are two counties that are west of Tarrant and Denton counties. They've um consistently given Republicans over eighty percent of the vote. So as Nick has explained, the four major counties in the Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area are Collin, Denton, Dallas, and Tarrant, but there are many other counties in the metropolitan area, and these are more exurban or rural in nature. Um, so with these counties, uh, some of them are actually more Republican than the Texas Panhandle, which is really impressive for a county that's tied with an urban area. So I'm going to go ahead and show you a progression of how the vote has progressed in these areas. So I've only mapped um, the Dallas-Fort Worth area right here. So as you'll notice from this, uh, in 2004, um, George Bush did really well in these suburban, exurban collar counties around here. These are somewhat rural or exurban in nature, but they're still tied to the metropolitan area. And he won these counties with 70 to 80 percent of the vote. Uh, in 2008, uh, Barack Obama made major inroads into the state and managed to make some of these counties a little bit less conservative than they were before. So Denton, Collin, Hunt, um, and Kaufman all became much less conservative among these collar counties, while Tarrant became less conservative in Dallas, also flipped to the Democratic Party after narrowly voting for, for Bush. Um, so if you look at 2012, Mitt Romney was able to regain some of the support from, uh, from these areas. He did really well. He actually pulled 80 to 90 percent of the vote in Wise and Parker counties, which is akin to what he was getting in the panhandle. Um, he also regained some of the support from these exurban areas. And so you kind of see this typical divide now where Wise and Parker are the most conservative of the, of the metropolitan area. And then these other counties around it, Johnson, Ellis, Kaufman, Hunt, and this tiny one right here, which is Rockwall County, um, are slightly less conservative, but still very, very much so. Collin and Denton are also conservative, but again, less so than, than those ones. And then Tarrant and Dallas. So it kind of snakes in um, around uh, kind of like a, uh, like a snake through there. Um, 2016 was where the totals really started to show. And as I mentioned earlier, Donald Trump won this by only 6.3 percentage points. Uh, there was really strong turnout in, in a lot of these areas. And so notice here is that Hillary Clinton actually came close to winning Tarrant County. She pulled it under 55% um, under of the vote, and it managed to pull Collin and Denton under 60% of the vote. At the same time, however, Donald Trump was managing to win Wise, Parker, and the more rural or exurban surrounding counties by, again, overwhelming margins. The problem for Republicans is that these counties are much less populated than Dallas County, Tarrant, or even Collin and Denton. Um, and so if you look at the swing overall, you'll notice um, that almost all of the counties have trended Democratic, all the major ones at least. Dallas and Denton have trended very Democratic in terms of their vote share. They become much more Democratic. Um, Collin and Tarrant as well, as well as Ellis and Rockwall counties to an extent. 
but Wise, Parker, Johnson, Hunt, and Kaufman have all become more conservative, um, have voted for more Republicans more than they did before. Um, this kind of goes to something that Jared was mentioning last week, where even in some of these metropolitan areas um, that are experiencing rapid population growth, they're still maintaining a conservative tendency, right? So next I'm going to show you these Senate races, which are equally important uh, to understanding um, Republican trends here. So um, if you notice over here, Kay Bailey Hutchinson managed to win over 60% of the vote in the Dallas-Fort Worth area um, in 2006, which is a very bad year for Republicans. She was kind of very typical uh, Texas Republican, suburban Republican at the point, was more pro-choice on the abortion issue, was fairly moderate in temperament, um, but still had very conservative credentials on a lot of economic issues and a lot of other issues in general. And she was rewarded with an overwhelming victory in 2006. Um, you'll notice again, these suburban, or the, the suburban areas of Collin, Denton, and Tarrant all voted overwhelmingly Republican. The exurban counties did so as well. And then even Dallas managed to vote for Kay Bailey Hutchinson as well. Uh, fast forward to 2012, and you have a more aggressive conservative candidate in Ted Cruz. Now, it was unlikely Republicans were going to win Dallas County, um, but he still managed to underperform compared to her. He only won around 56% of the vote in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, uh, whereas Paul Sadler, his Democratic opponent, won 41%. You'll notice that Wise and Parker here, like in the presidential race, have become 80, 81, 80% counties for Cruz, and then he's also maintained a lot of strength in those exurban counties as well as in Tarrant. Um, but this is kind of where some of the warning signs came to show up for Republicans. Um, 2018 was kind of where the wheels went off for the Houston area, or sorry, for the Dallas area Republicans. You'll notice that uh, Ted Cruz narrowly uh, lost the state, or narrowly won the state by around two percentage points, but he narrowly lost the Dallas-Fort Worth area. He lost it by around uh, 60,000 votes, uh, 2.5 percentage points to Beto O'Rourke, uh, who managed to win Tarrant County, uh, won Dallas by an overwhelming margin, and also managed to pull Colin and Denton to within 50 to 55 percent. However, even as he was able to do this, he really wasn't able to break into Wise, Parker, or any of these collar counties at all, um, which is uh, really kind of indic indicative of how these are uh, much more exurban in nature, even though they're rapidly growing. Um, one, a couple more maps I'm going to show you here real quick before we pass it over to Jared, who was going to explain some more granular details. But um, this, is, this is a precinct map of the gubernatorial race, or sorry, the Senate race in 2014. Uh, this was the race John Cornyn was the Republican nominee, and he was, he's the Republican nominee this time as well, and won the state by an overwhelming margin. And part of this was because he did very well in some of these urban and suburban counties. Um, like Tarrant County, you'll notice how much of the county is red. In fact, the only areas he did poorly in were areas that were minority heavy, so with Hispanic or Black voters, um, which this kind, of, this kind of right here uh, goes along with one of the congressional districts that Republicans drew. Um, he did very well in here, and you notice most of these other counties, many of them don't have any Democratic precincts at all. Even some of these counties that gave him 70 to 80 percent of the vote only have a handful of Democratic precincts. Um, kind of shows you how strong Republican presence is in this area. Um, Colin and Denton, of course, are tied pretty heavily with Dallas and Fort Worth, and you'll notice a lot of the population growth is along this little corridor right here, which is adjacent to Dallas County. Um, you'll notice this is also the more politically competitive region of the state. You'll notice this is where the most, aside from this little portion of blue up here, um, this is where some of the developing strength is for Democratic candidates in, uh, in Texas. And to win races, they're ultimately going to need to win counties like, uh, like uh, Denton and like, uh, like Collin. Um, so I'll go ahead and show a couple more here. So this is the gubernatorial results, very similar. Uh, the race is a little bit narrower than the Senate race was, but still an overwhelming Republican victory. And you'll notice Republicans still ha kind of had this residual strength in this area of Dallas right here, which Jared will go over later. Um, but you notice this burgeoning Democratic strength along the areas adjacent to Dallas County. Um, a lot of the issues Republicans have in these areas can be, can be traced to this kind of growth directly out of the cities. Um, and for a perspective on the density we're talking about here, you'll notice that uh, Dallas County and Tarrant County have very high population density, um, similar to what we talked about last week with Harris County. You'll also notice that uh, Collin and Denton counties are rapidly growing in density, uh, whereas the other counties like Wise, Parker, Kaufman, and even Rockwall, which is a very small county, uh, uh, you know, in terms of size, 
have fairly uh, low population density. Um, so another factor to look at when you're looking at Republican strength is the suburbanization, the difference between the suburb, suburban areas like you have in Dallas County up here compared to the urban areas. Um, one other thing before I kind of hand it off to Jared is I was going to show you the house ratings that we have at Elections Daily. Uh, we have made some changes recently. Um, you'll notice a lot of the, uh, a lot of the uh, districts that stretch into the Dallas-Fort Worth area uh, managed to go uh, stretch it into some of the rural areas. So for example, this portion that goes into Wise County, which is again a very Republican county, is actually the most uh, Republican congressional district in the country, Texas's 13th congressional district. Um, this is a district that Democrats rarely get above 20% in. And uh, Wise being in the district is not, in, is not a drag on that. It's actually about as conservative as the rest of the district. Um, you'll also notice again, some of these other areas, um, like for example, the third, um, some of these other ones around here that stretch into some of the more urban areas. So for example, um, this district right here, which stretches into uh, more urban parts of Dallas County is still safe Republican in our map. Um, whereas this one right here, which includes some of the more, um, some of the more uh, ex-urban counties is likely Republican because it stretches into um, Travis County, which is the home of uh, Austin. Um, so it's, it's mainly uh, more competitive on our map because of that. Uh, this district right here um, is more competitive because it contains the large portions of those suburban counties that I talked about earlier. And then probably the most competitive in the state is Kenny Merchant's district, uh, which he's retiring. And so the nominee, uh, the Democrat and the Republican will face off here. Uh, Beth Van Dyne, as well as Democratic nominee Candace Valenzuela um, will face off in this district. Um, one other one to mention right here is this congressional district right here. Uh, used to be a very strongly Republican district, but unfortunately for Republicans, the incumbent Republican was defeated in 2018 um, as this district became more Democratic uh, as Donald Trump um, started to uh, enter the political scene. So that's kind of the baseline of what we're talking about when we're talking about the, da uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area. Um, you have kind of that big, those big four counties, and then you have the exurban presence around it that are rapidly growing but are not quite growing at the same clip as the rest of the area and are not nearly as dense yet. So I'm gonna throw it off to Jared, who's gonna go a little bit more in depth into some of the stuff I just described. Yeah, so uh, I think Eric and Nick gave a really great context about the area as far as the political trends that we're seeing there, the population growth uh, and the dichotomy that we're seeing between the urban and more media suburban areas and then the uh, exurban areas and the rural areas, which are uh, still very strongly Republican. But I'm gonna show you some of the more granular and specific details that explain why these things are happening. So I'm gonna share my screen right now. I have this map, this is courtesy of Dave's, Dave's redistricting app. And the first thing I wanna show you is just a recap of the counties that constitute the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. So you have Dallas right here. Dallas, which is obviously home of Dallas, which is one of the major cities of the United States. You have its immediate suburbs like Irving, uh, Mesquite, uh, which is uh, basically to the east there. Garland and Richardson, which line the north here, and then Carrollton, uh, which is actually more similar to areas of Tarrant and Denton County as far as its character. Um, and then you have Highland Park here, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And then going on to the second most populous county here, you have Tarrant County right here, home of Arlington, which is rapidly growing and has a large minority population, uh, as well as Fort Worth, which is here. And Fort Worth is actually more conservative of a city than Arlington. If you look at the precincts, Trump actually did better in Fort Worth than he did in Arlington. And then you have other communities like Euless and Grand Prairie, uh, which are trending more democratic, uh, as well as some of the immediate northern and western suburbs, which are still Rock River Republican, uh, similar to Wise and Parker County that we talked about earlier. You have Collin County, which is northeast of Dallas, which is rapidly growing, but still pretty solidly Republican, though this is uh, prone to change within the next few years. Plano, Frisco, and McKinney, right over here, are the main cities that constitute Collin County. And then you have Denton, which out of these four is still the most Republican county. Uh, you have uh, Denton right here, Louisville, Carrollton, and in the center, you have the city of Denton, uh, or uh, the community right over here, uh, which is sort of a hub of blue uh, within the midst of a very red county. And then going to some of the other things you talked about, you have Wise and Parker, which are the more exurban counties, which have trended Republican recently. 
You have Johnson and Ellis County, and Ellis is an interesting one we'll, we'll I'll talk about a little bit later. Coffin right here, which is home to Terrell, which is actually uh, the base of one of the congressmen who, who represents the district that constitutes much of the area. And then Rockwall here, uh, while it is small, it is rapidly growing, which is interesting. So those are the main counties that constitute the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Now I want to go into some of the districts, because uh, the districts that constitute the area are reminiscent uh, of a few things. One of the things is, is the fact that you have that a huge split between the urban vote uh, and the rural, exurban, and sometimes suburban vote. And that's something that you're seeing here, even though things are changing nowadays. But also the Texas GOP, as I talked about last week, really aggressively gerrymandered uh, this entire region back at the previous census. So it's interesting to note uh, some of the ways that they did so. So I'm actually going to pull up. This is an inset of the Dallas metro area right here. And it shows you a few interesting things. First of all, you have some of the urban core districts. These districts are solely Democratic and were drawn as Democratic vote sinks uh, by the Texas Republican Party. First of all, you have the 30th district represented by Eddie Bernice Johnson takes in basically uh, most of urban Dallas as well as the southern suburbs. And as Nick talked about earlier, this district and the region that it encompasses is heavily African-American uh, with a scattering of Hispanic populations uh, within the north here. Then you have the 33rd district. And as Eric mentioned earlier, the 33rd district extends uh, from Dallas into Fort Worth. And if you remember that region of blue that you saw in Tarrant County, this district fully resembles this. The claw with the two little arms that stick out into the blue areas. This 33rd district covers pretty much all of the deep blue areas that are seen within Fort Worth uh, and Tarrant County as a whole. And so this is evidently another Democratic vote sink. It was created recently and it's currently represented by Mark Vesey. Then you have some of the districts that are starting to change very much. And the first a uh, district that we saw change the most is basically the 32nd district. The 32nd district uh, is right here, and it looks sort of like a terrier dog uh, with the head and the legs right here. And the 32nd district was drawn uh, almost 10 years ago now to be a pretty safely Republican district. This is a district that gave Mitt Romney a 15 point margin over Barack Obama in 2012, which even though was below the state margin by around 2%, is still a considerable margin for Republicans. And then in 2012, with Ted Cruz's first Senate election, even he did very well here. Uh, and especially in 2014, uh, with John Cornyn's Senate race, as well as Greg Abbott's gubernatorial bid, you saw this district vote heavily Republican. And the reason why is because it takes in a large swath uh, of suburban territory immediately north of Dallas that has historically been very Republican. And this is starting to change nowadays because this district is very highly educated, highly suburban, uh, and it's starting to really reject some of the new faces of the Republican Party. And so this district voted uh, for Beto O'Rourke actually in 2018 by a stunning 11 point margin uh, around that, uh, between 10 and 11 points actually. And then it voted to out its Republican incumbent in Pete Sessions in favor of Colin Allred, who's the current representative here. And so there's still some, some remnants, there's still some vestiges of Republican support here. And the one I want to highlight particularly is University Park right here. This is home to Southern Methodist University. Uh, it is basically the wealthiest region of Dallas, and it still votes pretty heavily Republican. And so you see uh, a ruby red region inside of Dallas, you know that that's University Park. Uh, and that is just a remnant of Republican support that is still holding strong for the party even as the 32nd district uh, is changing hands. Then you have the 24th district right over here. This is currently represented as Eric mentioned by Kenny Marchant, who's been representing this district since 2005. It takes in basically three counties. You have Denton up here, uh, Dallas over here, and then Tarrant. The Dallas part has basically been pulling this district to the left. And so this district voted uh, upwards of 20% for Mitt Romney back in 2012 but it voted for Donald Trump by around 6%. And in 2018, Kenny Marchant faced a pretty underfunded opponent, but still only won by 3%, as Beto O'Rourke took this district by between 3 and 4%. A pretty remarkable change, uh, considering how Republican this district was drawn and how historically it is voted. And as you can see, it takes in places like Coppell. Uh, Flower Mound is a little north of there, but it takes in uh, regions of that. 
uh, as well as diving into sort of the immediate outskirts of places like Irving uh, and the city of Dallas itself. Then you have a few districts that uh, are still solidly Republican, uh, are starting to change, uh, but they sure show some interesting dynamics. The third district up here is represented by Van Taylor, uh, who is a freshman uh, incumbent of the district and a Republican. The district was formerly represented by Sam Johnson, who is an institution of Texas politics. And the third district takes in much of Collin County and mainly takes in its urban areas. Uh, and some of the other more rural areas of Collin County are relegated to other congressional districts, such as the fourth. Um, now, the third district uh, is still pretty solidly Republican, but that's starting to change as is with every other district. And Van Taylor's district now, uh, as Eric showed earlier, is rated as only likely Republican. And this is because Donald Trump is probably not gonna uh, have a margin of over 5% in this district based on how current trends are holding and based on current polling. You have the 26 here, which is still solidly Republican, represented by Michael Burgess. Uh, there's no reason for Republicans to worry about it changing hands anytime soon, even though you do see some of those trends. And the fifth year represented by Lance Gooden, who's from Terrell, uh, was previously represented by Jeb Hedsarling, who was the head of the House Financial Committee, basically. Uh, and even though this extends very much into the city of Dallas itself, it takes in large swaths of exurban and rural territory, which helps it stay comfortably in the Republican column. And this is just uh, one of many examples of the Texas GOP way back when, making sure that districts like the fifth would be able to counterbalance their more democratic areas with heavily Republican ones to help them stay solidly Republican. Then there are two districts I want to talk about a little bit more, which are the sixth and the twelfth. The sixth and the twelfth have some commonalities in that they extend very much into Tarrant County, but also have a lot of territory in the more exurban counties. For example, the twelfth extends into Parker County and Wise County up north, while the sixth extends into Ellis County, which extain, or, or which contains uh, such uh, rural communities as Ennis. And these districts actually are seeing some. Uh, competing trends. The 12th is represented by Kay Granger, who actually survived a Republican challenge earlier this year uh, in Chris Putnam, who was more uh, of a pro-Trump individual. And Kay Granger uh, represents this district that is anchored by much of the western and northwestern suburbs of Tarrant County, and they remain very solidly Republican. But even along with that, with the addition of Parker and Wise counties, which are among the most Republican in the state, as you mentioned earlier, this district is solidly Republican. And even Ted Cruz in his lackluster bid uh, for reelection in 2018 for the Senate managed to clear 60% of the vote here. The six on the other hand, uh, takes in much of Arlington uh, and some of this Eastern Tarrant County area is trending very democratic, it has a large population of Latinos uh, and it's growing very much in population. And so even though it's tempered by this exurban territory right here in counties like Ellis, the district only voted for Ted Cruz by around 3%. So uh, this district uh, is gonna become much more competitive in the future considering current trends. Uh, and you might start to see some more democratic uh, success here. Uh, just to mention a few, a few small others, the 13th, uh, we talked about that a little bit earlier, extending into the panhandle. The 25th represented by Roger Williams, who's from Weatherford actually, uh, but uh, nevertheless, he represents this district. But this goes into Travis County in Austin. That's one of the reasons why this district has become a little more competitive recently. And then the fourth here uh, extends out into much of Northeastern Texas. So I think that's pretty sufficient for the districts themselves. And the last thing I'm gonna show um, is basically the ratings. And so now that you have a better understanding of where these districts lie, you might be able to see why these ratings uh, are holding and why Elections Daily decided to give these ratings to these districts. So once again, I'm gonna pull up a smaller, more detailed map of this. You can see Kay Granger's district right here, solidly Republican. Again, Parker and Wise really help uh, to give a strong Republican brand to the district, even as it goes into uh, the Fort Worth area. This, uh, the district right here that we just talked about, currently represented by Ron Wright. Uh, uh, and this is rated as solid Republican here, but in the future, you might start to see some changes to that. Now, the district right here represented by Michael Burgess, still solidly Republican, uh, as with most of these other districts right here, save Roger Williams district, 
But Van Taylor's district, as I mentioned, is likely Republican now just because of uh, uh, enormous population growth in places like Plano, McKinney, and Frisco. Uh, Texas's 37, 32nd district, rather, is likely Democratic just because the current state of affairs and the trends are pointing in a are pointing towards a stronger Democratic performance. And then the 24th right here is the toss up of them all and is basically the marquee race of Texas uh, for the coming election cycle. And the last thing I'm gonna show you, uh, going back to this map, is I actually made, um, if you excuse me one second, I made this map from Dave's redistricting app and it's meant to be a post 2020 Republican gerrymander of the Dallas Fort Worth region. Uh, and there are a few interesting things that you can see here. Um, sorry, give me one second. And so uh, this is supposed to be a, an aggressive Republican gerrymander, but basically what I wanna show you here is the fact that because there's such astronomical population growth in Dallas, it would be, uh, or it would behoove the Republican party of Texas to construct an additional safe democratic seat within the Dallas-Fort Worth area to take in some of those changing districts that are becoming more friendly to the Democrats. And that way you can have more room to basically carve out districts for Republicans that are gonna be safe for the party for years to come. Yeah, so as Jared said, there's obviously a lot of diversity within the, the Dallas-Fort Worth area in terms of how they vote and in terms of where population growth is coming from. Um, this is uh, to get, kind of give you an idea of how Republican this area used to be. I'm going to show you the 2014 Senate race, which I kind of mentioned earlier. I showed what the precincts looked like, but I want to kind of give you a bigger picture of what the actual race looked like to show you how impressive his performance was. Um, Republicans down ballot have tended to do, to do very well. Um, Republicans actually managed to win, for example, a lot of the congressional districts that snake up from the Rio Grande Valley in down ballot elections, because in places like Cameron County, they tend to do a lot better in state level elections. Uh, the 2014 race was no exception. Um, so you'll notice right here, uh, I'm on uh, Dave Leap's election at atlas. Um, they use an in inverted color scheme, the more traditional blue and red. Um, so obviously blue here is Republican and red here is Democratic. You'll notice that in this race, um, John Cornyn ran very well. He managed to win 61% of the vote against David Alamiel, an underfunded Democratic candidate. And he managed to win several counties that are very Democratic now, like Harris County, um, like uh, Bayard County. Um, some of these other areas around here even did pretty decently in, for example, Dallas County, El Paso, and Cameron County. Um, but I'm going to show you kind of the, the historic strength in these areas, the extent that we're talking about here. So you'll zoom in here. You'll notice he only lost Dallas County by around 3% uh, of the vote. Uh, he only lost it by around 12,000 votes, which is not a lot. Um, and it's a really strong performance and kind of gives you an idea of where exactly the density in that county was. Because if I were to show you um, the exact Senate election here, you'll notice that there's actually a lot of blue in this county right here. Um, but he managed to do really well in these more wealthy Republican areas in the North. And that was that's enough to get you pretty close to winning the county. Um, you notice in Tarrant, he pulled over 60% of the vote, which is really impressive these days. And in Denton and Collin, he won nearly 70% of the vote. Um, outran his statewide total in all of these and managed to you know, run very close to a statewide total in Tarrant. Meanwhile, in places like Wise, Parker, he was pulling 80% and was nearing that margin in Rockwall and Hunt. Um, so uh, this is the sort of map Republicans used to be used to. Uh, another map to show would probably be um, the 2010 Senate race, um, which is, or sorry, the 2010 gubernatorial race, which is against a strong Republican or Democratic nominee in Bill White. You notice right here, uh, managed to pull over 60% of the vote, Rick Perry did, in Collin and Denton. Managed to pull over 56% in Tarrant and didn't get humiliated in Dallas. Um, that's the sort of down-ballot strength that Republicans are really typically very used to in the state. And one more to show would be um, the 20, 2008 race. So as, um, as you know, Democrats are doing pretty well um, nationally, uh, people wanted to unseat John Cornyn. But again, he did pretty well in these areas. 55% of the vote in Tarrant, over 60% in Collin and Denton, uh, really well in just these surrounding counties in general. So um, what I'm meaning to get at here is that places like the Dallas-Fort Worth area are going to be really important for Republicans in the future. And it's where Republicans like John Cornyn uh, made truly their landslides come from. Uh, John Cornyn has always been very popular among the suburban and urban wing of the Republican Party. Most of his issues 
in past elections that have resulted in unsuccessful primaries have come from strongly conservative Republican voters in the rural areas. So of all the candidates running, John Cornyn is really ideally positioned to uh, perform very well um, in the next election, or at least relative to Trump. He's positioned out to perform Trump because he still has that residual strength in places like uh, Dallas, Tarrant, Collin, and Denton that can really help him, especially against a very well-funded Democratic nominee in MJ Hager, even though on paper she's not really the strongest candidate, aside from some really impressive fundraising numbers. So um, we'll be continuing to go over Texas in the future. We have at least one other episode planned on, on the state, but hopefully this gives you an idea of the Dallas-Fort Worth area and why it's so important for the state of Texas. Um, it may be the second largest in Texas, but it's not, by no means is it a uh, less important than Houston. If anything, some of the trends are more interesting because they're straight out across several counties instead of over just one county. But with that, um, we're going to close off this episode of The Map Room. Um, where can I find you on social media, Jared and Nick? You can find me on Twitter at Jason Politics. You can find me on Twitter too. My handle is Toss Up Report. And you can find me on Twitter at D.E. Cunningham too. Uh, you can also find all of our articles at elections-daily.com. Um, we go to the go to the contributors page, and you can easily find all the articles we've written. There's also been some interesting articles that we published about Texas lately, including the sixth congressional district. Um, one of our new contributors, Ehab Alusani, uh, wrote an excellent piece on on, on the Dallas Fort Worth area that's really worth the read if you want to kind of go in depth into some of the trends we're talking about here. Um, but with that, we're going to uh, end this episode of the Map Room. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next week.